Time to get a better place. It'll take creation, imagination. Try to draw out. Hi everybody, this is Tina with Loving Life's Little Blessings. Thank you guys for coming by and hanging out with me today. Today we're taking a look at Violet's album. This is Memory Keeping Friday, and so I'm sharing with you guys some memory keeping tips and tricks and just how I stay on top of all the memory keeping that I do. So this is Violet's album. Each of my kids have an album that they get every year that I do, and each of their albums it's a different color so I try to in the very beginning I used to just get them a new album every single year and I would pick one out and it would be like different and then I realized I didn't really like the way they looked on the shelf and so what I started doing is getting one color for each of them so violets is this lime green and we picked lime green for her because she has a lime green blanket and then Kayla was old enough to pick out her own color album and she picked out pink and then Andrew's album is black now in each of my albums I get two years per kid so this is violets it would be her four year and five year and the album for my kids start the month of their birthday so for violet her birthday is in november so this goes from november all the way through november so then i have a tab right here and this starts 2014 and 15 so this was 2013 and then 2014 as this chunk and then this is 2014 2015 so the number one question that I get asked is how do I do an album for each of my children plus a family album every year? So let me show you guys. I'm getting ready to set up her next album because she's out of this album. So I want to show you guys what I do. So here is the very next month is November. So right now... There's no photo. There, well, yeah, there's no photos for October because I just haven't printed. And there's uh, I'm missing the last part of September. You can see. So that's just because I haven't printed photos. The, when I got photos, they ended like mid September. So I have this set up and it's ready for photos when I get them printed. And then here's October and then. I would go into November. So I know that I can't get another full year into this album and I'm really particular about liking a full year in the album. So even though I could probably get maybe two or three more months, I'm just going to go ahead and start a new album. So you can see here, here's the tabs on this that break up every single month. And then over here, there's a tab that break that breaks up the two years. Okay. So what I'll do is I will get another green album and I'm going to show you, I have a bunch of supplies here and I'm going to show you how I set it up and then that way you can see exactly what I do. So knowing that we're at the very end of the album, what I'm going to do is I got her album out and I knew I've dropped in all the photos I have and I've dropped in all the memorabilia I have and I'll need to print photos for the September and October and I'll do that. But what I like to do when I get to the very end of an album like this and I'm getting ready to set up a new album is I just go through the album and I start making sure that everything is in order. So I just start flipping through. And I can see right away that I'm missing photos for December 2013. So what I'll do is I just keep a set of sticky notes right. Well, there's, you know, post-it notes everywhere in my house. Let's face it. I love post-it notes. So I just grab a post-it note and a pen. And I'll start making notes. So I'll do two photos. December. 2013 okay so then as i'm going through so we know january is fine okay so february i'm missing oh no this is january so i used to do this is why this is what happened i used to do two full spreads per month for each of my kids so here's january 2014 here's violet and then here would be 
another set from January. What I realized is I did not have enough photos to do that. So I will make a note to photos January 2014, but I don't know if I'll necessarily be able to find that. And then, so in February is when, in 2013 is when I started just, oh no, March I think is. Yeah, so I did that for February as well. There was two spreads. And I obviously need to do some journaling. So when I'm going through here, uh, then I'll do journaling January. I just make little quick notes. And so then it was in March that I started just doing one spread. I realized I didn't have enough photos to do two. So that's what I'll do is I'll just flip through here. And if there's anywhere that I'm missing photos, I'll make a note of it. And then I'll also make sure that my title cards up here are stamped, which most of them are up to this point. I know there's some that aren't. So two photos... September 2013. So I keep doing that. I go all the way through and then that way I can go back on my computer and look through and see if I have photos for those that are missing and I can add it to my next photo batch for when I get them printed. So then I just make sure this is how I split up a year. I just use designer paper. So this is October of 2014. I knew I wanted to do a divider, so I put pattern paper here, and then I did this like a title page. This was a picture actually taken on her birthday. It just worked out. So then I have 2014 and 2015. I did a little picture of her, and then it goes into the next year. This was her birthday. Sometimes I'll have inserts into their birthday because, you know, maybe we did something else so then here was December and I wanted to show you guys this these were two photos that somebody else took and they took them in the landscape mode instead of like the horizontal mode and so I was really trying to figure out like what am I gonna do I can't crop these like to crop them down like trim them down I would lose so much of like what was going on so I just made a decision to go ahead and put these photos in here going the wrong direction and I know it's a little bit weird like you look at this and then there's like it's weird and the photos are weird but the truth of the matter is there was no way for me to crop these down and make them go the direction I wanted and I was not willing to sacrifice the memories that these photos captured it's very very rare for me to have a photo of my grandma you guys who have followed me for a long time know my grandma hates getting her photo taken and I'm constantly sneaking photos of her and it's very rare for me to have like this photo of her and Violet together and they're baking and I was not willing to sacrifice that memory simply because the photo was going in the wrong direction and I didn't have enough the other problem the only thing that is difficult with project life is because this is pocketed Whatever pocket style you use on this side, then you have to use it on this side, right? Because that's going to be the directions of the pockets. So I knew I didn't have eight photos that were going in this direction. I had four. So I totally could have used a design D where the pockets are going the opposite direction. But then when I turned over the page I was going to have the same problem where I wasn't going to have enough photos in that direction to make it work so I just decided to roll with it the photos are in her album and they're there I didn't leave them out and it's totally fine so sometimes you just have to make those kinds of decisions to move on and get the photos in the album and move on like there's, you know, we're, we're just moving on and that's the way I look at it. So here's that, that December. So then January starts and I don't do a big divider for January, even though it's a brand new year, simply because for Violet, that's her whole birthday year. So then at the beginning of every year in January for our family album, I always do handprints for our family album. And so I do them for the kids' album too. So there is an insert. And then I know I have a lot of journaling that I need to do in this year that I haven't gotten to. So I'll do that. We'll get back here. And then I'll obviously have the photos to finish that up. And I'll wrap her year up. And then I'll be able to put her album um, up on you know on the shelf and this album will be done so let me show you guys how I set up a brand new album
and I don't have an album. I haven't bought it yet. I need to purchase a family album for us and I need to purchase uh, an album for Violet. So the first thing I have here is just a bunch of Design A page protectors. These came in an album, so I just need to pull this stuff out, but they're just a Design A and I have some Design A here. Okay, the next thing I have are some clear dividers. For my kids' album, I use these clear dividers and I love them and then I just label them with the month. So I have some labels that come with these clear dividers. All of the links of product I talk about will be on my coordinating blog post. So all you have to do is click right up here to get to that post or click down below in the YouTube description and I'll link all the product I talk about. So these labels come with these dividers and so I'll use those. And then I always put in the very back of all my kids' album one of these 12 by 12 large envelopes and they have like this right here and I'll put the year on there but then I have this. So I wanted to show you guys, I always have envelopes like an extra set of envelopes sitting around. I wanted to show you the different sizes that you can get uh, because I think these are fabulous. I This is a set of 12 by 12. You get three in a pack. And so that usually works out great for me because I have three kids. So I'm always like going through these and needing three of them. So I have those on hand. But then Becky Higgins also has a couple other sizes. So this is the 6x12, which I'm a huge fan of 6x12 anything, like the 6x12 page protectors. I just really love the way that that can look layered in your album. And you get one of these anytime you order an album from Becky Higgins, like one of her faux leather. I don't know about the other albums, but her faux leather albums come with a 6x12 envelope and I've purchased two albums from her so that's why I have these and then this is actually a size that Stampin' Up! sells and it is the 6x I think it's a 6x8 so those are all great options and no matter where you if it has the logo project life on it it's going to coordinate you're going to be able to put it in any album that's part of the appeal of using the Project Life brand is if it says Project Life on it, whether it's Project Life by Stampin' Up or Project Life by Studio Calico or Project Life by Becky, Becky Higgins, it's all going to coordinate and you're going to be able to fit it into the albums like the holes will all line up. So let's get started putting Violet's next year album together. So I always start with the very back and I just put an envelope. And then as I often do, I'm just going to grab one of these. Okay, so now I have those dividers in. And so now what I'll do, since I don't have an album quite yet, I'll just go ahead and attach my ring and that will keep all of this together. And then I will do up a title page and then I'll probably even set up like December, January and February. Uh, so I have it all set up for her. And then I can just pop it in the album when I get it. I'm planning on purchasing albums in November. I'm hoping for a Black Friday sale or a Cyber Monday sale. So I'm holding out to get that. So I wanted to point out on these labels, you get 15 of these dividers and then you get, so then some, you get different some different stickers. So this set has all the months. So it has January through December and then it has preschool all the way through 12th grade. And then there's a set that has kindergarten, uh, and then it's prep, and then year one, two, all the way through 13, and then play school, kindergarten, grade one through 13. And you get quite a few, and then you get a blank. You get one through 15, and then you get blank ones as well. So I think you get... I want to say you get two each of each design when you get the dividers, but I'm not positive. You might only get one, like one each of each design. But you can see that I've collected a ton of these labels now because I really only use the months. 
So that makes a great option if you wanted to get in an album, like maybe you just wanted to get some of preschool if you wanted to go back, like maybe your kids are older and you have some random photos, you could get like first, second, third, fourth, you could get like five or six years into one album and that would make it super easy to just get those photos in an album, have a divider for each year and then you feel like you've done you know, something to get those into albums. So that's, that is how I set up all of our albums for, I mean, all the kids albums get set up in advance like this. And then I have showed you how I set up my family album in advance. And I'll stick a card right up here. If you missed that, I recently did that where I set up a few months in our family album in basically the same, you know, the same idea is, this. So thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out with me. I will have, if I can get these uh, front title page done and some of her months done, I'll have photos on my website. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get to that uh, before this video goes up, but if I do, I'll have photos for you guys. And of course, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the YouTube description below, or you can contact me through my website. I'm always happy to help you guys when you get into projects and you're trying to, you know, document your life or you're trying to put albums together. If at all you need help, please just reach out and contact me. I always love helping with that. All right, you guys, I'm checking back in, you, in with you really quick to show you what I did. I went ahead and set up in Violet's album November, December, and January. So I was showing you December with the Christmas paper, and I'm going to show that to you. But I went back and I did November, and I used the Seasonal Snapshot 2015 kit from Stampin' Up, and I just did that. There'll be photos on my website. Then here's what I did with Christmas. Again, this was from the seasonal snapshot, and so was this, and then so was this. And then this card I added in, just like that, so that was perfect. And then I did, all right, so for January, I just used designer paper again. I wanted to show you that it's super easy to use your designer paper and what you already have. So I used our Winter Wonderland, I believe is the name of the designer paper, and it's in this black and gold. And there's like this gold to this. I know this just looks white. Uh, can I zoom in a little bit for you guys? Yeah, there you go. So there's like a gold design on that. So I just used that designer paper and then I popped in a gold piece of glimmer paper. And then I took my framelits that have the snowman and I made this cute little gold glitter snowman. I thought it was a little bit of a different take on January using that black and gold and the snowflakes. And then that will be perfect. So there you go, you guys. That's how you can just use your designer paper to create really great project life cards. So make sure you head over to my website and check out the supply list, and I'll be back next week for you guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you guys for hanging out with me to the very end of my video. I am in a Christmas kind of mood. And so I have two other Christmas videos for you guys here. I have a shaker card I did with the snowman framelits that I used on the January layout. And you can check that out. It was the first shaker card I ever made. And then I put together that Santa Claus card there that you can check out as well. So I hope you're having a wonderful day and thanks for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you guys next week.